Hello, everybody. Today, I am joined by Tony and Richard from UK Games Expo, and they're here to bring us a update on the plans for their virtual expo, or virtually expo for 2020. Um, so, gentlemen, it's great to see you here. Hello. Who wants to kick off? Um, well, Richard, you kick yeah. off. You've got a headset and a mic and everything. Oh, I have it. So very, 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 very professional. Yes. Are you ready to kick off? Yeah, so the, the idea is what we want to do is to take the essence of Expo, as would have been, had we all managed to all to get together in a few a couple of weeks' time. Um, but can't do a last, but basically we're trying to take all the essence of that and do it in an online form so that there is contact with the, uh, our community, the mm. visitors. Uh, the exhibitors can show basically what they've got to show, that they would have shown if people have been able to be there. Uh, people can get gaming. Um, there's plenty of opportunity for uh, seminars and workshops and other things. We can go into the details in a bit. But basically the essence of the, the, the expo um, in an online form that we could all yeah. access as we are having to do from, from our various locations. And it gives us something to do. Yeah, because we haven't got an expo to run. Yeah, keeps us sane, basically. This well, is, I mean, this, but essentially, that's the main reason we're doing it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's an excellent reason. I think a lot of people stuck at home at the moment um, were looking forward to the expo, and then obviously seeing it have to be pushed back a year, it, it leaves a lot of conventions have gone away, and it's just leaving big gaps in people's uh, summer plans. So it's nice to see that there will be some way that they can still... Um, get a taste of, of what they would have got if they'd actually managed to uh, to get to the expo this year. Yeah, I mean, I mean, key to that will hopefully be, I mean, I'm thinking myself, is that, you know, a lot of the people we've over the last 14 years got to know and um, expos when we see them. Hmm. And I know people think, oh, well, you'll be too busy to see anybody, but we do. We, we, we see these folks, we have a beer, we have, you know, we chat to them over a set up and, and break down. Um, and... You know, it's going to be very peculiar for the first time not seeing any of mm. those, uh, you know, people who become friends, not just people yeah. who are customers, but but friends. And this is an opportunity for, I, I know a lot of people come to the expo and they meet up with friends they don't see very often. Um, so in the social distancing times, um, hopefully this is where they can virtually come together and still have a chat and still have a game and still have uh, some time together and, and make those connections. It's funny, uh, we've actually had a few uh, community members in places like Australia and America who say they would never be able to actually attend the physical convention, but are looking forward to being able to jump into the virtual convention um, yeah. just to see what they, they would normally see only through sort of the live blogs and, and posts that pop up on the site that they can actually get involved this time. So in respect to the, the virtual convention could be reaching a lot more people um you know, I, think, I think we're seeing that happening i, yeah. I sort of lurked and i think steve jackson games did a thing some weeks ago and i sort of went in and out of that a few times and mm -hmm. it was seen that's probably gonna be an element that's going to happen this year quite a bit i, I suspect because other other things aren't there around the other shows are doing something similar so i think we'll, there'll be a lot of popping in <laughs> in and out of each other's shows i should think over the over the months to come so if we have a look at the current plans for Virtually Expo, um, it's more or less taking what you already had planned and just, and just migrating it to a digital version. As much as you could transfer the, the Expo across, it's still there. We're still going to see the same sort of demo games and um, not competition games, but, but that style of RPG and the like. Um, what can you tell us about your, your plan so far for the, the actual setup for these? So, shall we start with the role playing and the, and the gaming bit yeah. of it? Yeah. No, we'll start with from there. So, um, I think the idea of there's, there's different games, of course, there's role playing games and there's board games and miniature games. Now, of those forms, role playing is probably the easy, uh, it's in some ways the easiest to do yeah. online. Um, and in fact, you know, Tony and, 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 and I both run and play in, in, in online games and we've been experimenting with the fun of fancy grounds we? <laughs> and, uh, mm. <laughs> if that's the right word and, and, edge sword that is uh, and discord and we're, we're aware and we've dipped yeah. our toes into things like um, roll 20 and other systems um so the the idea for the role playing is that the gms will submit games and they will submit the platform that they envisage using Mm -hmm. um so whether they want to use just discord or they just want to use zoom 
whether they want to use Fantasy Grounds or Roll20 or any of the other systems. Yeah. Um, and they will have to explain what the player will need. Um, so if they somebody wants to use Fantasy Grounds, they're going to need a, you know, they're going to need a, um, you know, a copy of it. But they can have the free mm. copy. The GM has to have the one that's paid yeah. for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Copy, yeah, they can join with a, with a free version, can't they? Mm. Yeah. So that's the idea. The games will therefore explain how to access it, um, and then when they when they book a ticket to it, they will they'll be given the instructions. Further instructions, I think, is the idea. Tones and uh, how. Yeah, so um, in, in addition to that, um, uh, we will have lots of volunteers standing by. So normally the people who run the RPG room at the Expo um, will have a similar support system in place so that if you come on and you go, um, I wanted to play this, and uh, you can then ask them, A, what sort of RPGs you'd like to have a go at. Yeah. And, of course, they'll have a, a decent idea of, of what software is required. So, you know, um, and, and they'll be available on, on chat so that uh, during the weekend and during the expo, the virtually expo, they'll be able to, you'll be able to get some feedback and some help mm -hmm. um, in making sure you've got the right software and a, and a little bit of tech support. That's very interesting, especially because you're, you're opening it up again to submissions. Um, originally, you would have been constrained with people in the UK or people who were traveling to run them. But yes. it's possible that somebody in America could go, I, I fancy running this. Uh, and you could almost break yes, the time zones with this. Yeah. You know, so, so depending, on, depending on who's out there and whether or not they want to try and... Um, a Venezuelan alpaca farmer with a penchant for vampire could... Um, it is very popular in that neck of the woods, I believe, yeah. Uh, but, you know, but, but things like that do just open up massively, especially I play a lot of games on Discord. Um, it's a very easy platform to get into for, for role-playing, so you don't, need to, you don't need to start playing with the, the more no, 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 tech-savvy no, no. stuff if you don't I, I, need I, I, to. Absolutely not. I mean, you can yeah. just share a screen, can't you, in Discord or, yeah. or Zoom or whatever. Um, then you've got board games. Now, we're, we're still um, in, in the process of working mm. out exactly how we're going to do that. We have mm. conversations with a few, a few folk about that. There are a number of systems out there um, we're looking at, um, and uh, hopefully we'll, there'll, there'll be tournaments and also open gaming. All right. There'll be a matching up system or, or some sort of a, a room where, where people can come to and sort of say, hey, I want to play this game, and then folk, like they do at the Real Expo, and then get together and go off and play the game somehow <laughs> which is we're still working on the somehow um but um, that will hopefully come together yeah. fairly soon in the next week or so um and i suppose the most difficult form of, of all the, uh, gaming that will be to do this way would be miniatures um difficult to envisage how how that will 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 would work but there is vassal um and people do use the vassal system online for doing miniature yeah. gaming so there may be some elements of that but we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see yeah i mean we, we understand we can't reproduce the expo no, no right? and so and um about we've got about nine nine ten weeks before it launches mm. i think it would perhaps it's so it still going on the in case of pushing as far as we can mm. in what we can do yeah. uh, by the time we want to make sure that stuff works mm. So um, uh, the, one of the other issues with running a virtual expo when it's not business mm -hmm. is, of, of course, what numbers are you going to suddenly have turning up? And as you've already said, um, you're now open for the entire world to come in. Sure. And the gaming world, and therefore people who attend Gen Con and may have been thinking, well, you know, I would have loved to go to UK Games Expo, but too expensive. Mm. Suddenly go, well, we can drop into this. So we don't know whether we'll get 300 or 3,000 or 30,000. Yeah. So, um, of course, we're working on our server infrastructure to make sure that whatever comes in we can handle. And then by putting this out to other platforms who, you know, deal with millions of people mm -hmm. a day, um, that will ensure that, you know, in theory, all of these different uh, games should be able to run. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's, there's different styles that people can get into there as well as 
so that's uh, a lot will come down to I suppose the people who are trying to organise the games for you. Yeah, once um, they've got some structure in place for yeah. some of these other areas, then more detail will flow in the next few weeks. But yeah. so we hope there'll be plenty. But certainly the umpires and tournament organisers that were would would have run at several of these events in the real expo are up for doing something. <laughs> you know, some fall back. They're just looking yeah. themselves as to what they're yeah. 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 the, yeah. the best method is. Um, so you obviously. You, you don't know the sort of the numbers you're going to get in yourself. Um, I've seen that the um, expo is being set up that you can um, pay a contribution or pay what you want for, for certain access. Do you, do you have different platforms, different levels of access for the convention? No, no, it's a case of um, it's, a, it's essentially free to come in and, and use the system and use Virtually Expo and see the content mm -hmm. and link to the content. And we're saying to people, if you feel you've had some worth out of it, you've had some fun out of it, mm -hmm. if you want to support the expo, if you're just fed up keeping all your money, we don't want to give <laughs> too money, much money, I need to, to give it away, then there's then an opportunity to effectively um, purchase an expo, virtually expo ticket, um, but what, at whatever level you like. Okay. So you, you can go in, you know, pound, you know, two pound, five pound, ten pound, or just sure. put a one pound fifty in if you like. Um, I think there's a minimum of, I don't think we go below 50p because we get charged for processing the transaction. The, the transaction, yeah. At that point, it costs us more to, <laughs> it starts yeah. to cost you more than you, than you get. From the best that you don't get that on the go, yeah. Um, so, um, so that's the idea. And there's a couple of reasons for that is, is one, this you know we don't like charging for things unless we know we can absolutely deliver sure and um, with this yeah, there's there's gonna i think there will be some teething issues as they say hmm. um well, we can't guarantee the experience we all we can do is our best but at that point i don't want to charge you money um for something we can't uh, be sure of delivering at a certain level mm -hmm. um so I think it, it's on that way. It's, a, it's an ethical and correct way of doing it. The other thing is, um, of course, it's it's fairly difficult to paywall all of these events, etc. Yeah. And so we could spend an awful lot of time working ways out to do that, but then we'll end up with less content and less fun stuff to do. And we'd rather go, look, let's get as much fun stuff to do. And, you know, we'll leave the community and the, those visiting to, you know, decide whether it was fun enough to um, cover the cost, as yeah. it were. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the only difference some... with that is yeah. RPGs mm -hmm. and tournaments. Yeah. We are charging a small charge for that because they're limited seats. We want to try and encourage people. We've always done this. Um, so if there's six seats in a role-playing game, you don't want people just to book the tickets out thinking they might go to They it. might go, yeah. Um, so there's a small charge there just to, to keep people honest, as it were, and, and try and make sure we, we have less no-shows. But um, with this, one of the, the things we can do much more easily is a GM can report no-shows very quickly, hmm. and we can release those slots. The, the space for somebody else to join in, yeah. So, um, I mean, I mean at, the, at the Physical Expo, we've done an awful lot of work on a sort of flight app for that where the GM can sit in their, their, at their table and book people in and then just tap a key. And if there are no shows, it shows back in the main um, library suite where people can then say, all oh, right, there are spare games. So we'd all we'd already done a lot of work on making that happen and actually had done a fair number of improvements for this year before, because uh, this year, of course, we rewrote the entire website to make it mobile first and friendly and, and, um, we would have been um, withdrawing the app this year because the, the mobile website had replaced it. Would have done the job. Yeah, yes, it, it, yeah, much much simpler, and that would have become our progressive web app, and will do for the future. Um, if people are interested in starting to see um, the changes that users are making on, on how to go about getting involved with the Virtually Expo, uh, this is the current homepage for UK um, Games Expo. This is where they would have been coming to for the expo as we know it. This is going to start to change as of Saturday. Yes. 
Um, so we are we are working on updating this to reflect virtually Expo, which mm -hmm. it, it will maintain till um, the end of August once we've run the run the event, and then it will come back to um, looking at uh, you know uh, prepping for next year's show. Mm -hmm. So um, what people need to understand is because this is a new thing, we are progressively adding to the content. Okay. So we, we won't have it all in one go. Um, as we confirm technologies, events, what people are doing, um, we will then update the website. So this is going to be a case, and as you can see, this is part of our um, staging server. So yeah. um, this, is, this is what it will look like um, on Saturday. Um, again, there will be some changes to this because we're, we're editing and... Um, playing around with this at the moment but this will now become the website and will be the source of of all the information before the weekend to, to help you get the most out of it so at the moment um well people can't come here at the moment tomorrow when this is up and running they can come here some yeah. of these legs may not be filled yet so people just need to be aware that as as you actually get things tied if, down if there is a link there will be content. There'll be content. And if, 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 if there isn't content, we won't add the link. Okay. Because there's nothing more annoying than clicking a link and clicking then there's like nothing a, there. finding a, a little click that link now. Or so, yeah. uh, if, there, if there's a link, there'll be some content and um, some information. But that content may grow over, grow over time, won't it, Rich? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we've mentioned gaming. I suppose we haven't really covered other areas. So we're, no. we're intending, obviously, having... A seminar schedule. There'll be um, some some things happening with the cosplayers. There'll be um, other other areas of the show will be happening on the public live side of it. Live entertainment. A lot of the live acts are all on board. Of course, they're all set up for this. Hmm. So we'll be able to bounce people off to you know, the dark room and you know jolly boat and places like that. Um, shows that are going to link in with the expo sort of timetable. <laughs> um, and you know there'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of other stuff happening and a, and a trade hall as well there'll be a virtual trade, oh, yes, trade um, which the exhibitors well we will be able to submit and interact with in some way so um you know whether that'll be just a place to go and peruse their wares as it were or yeah. whether it'll be more than that where they may well be uh demonstrations um and other areas or they may have chat like chapter demonstrations like um yeah. like in america Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. Possibly not those. People with plastic running around going, Expo. <laughs> Does that mean for things like uh, the seminars? Because normally you'd be restricted in how many people can fit physically into a seminar room, that the seminars would become larger in size, or will that yeah, again yeah, depend yeah, on the. Seminars will be twitched out. Well, all right. So, so, so um, Millie, who is super techie, hmm. much techier than us two, um, will effectively hold the seminar, squidge it all together in a squidgy thing, and then squirt it out to Twitch. Okay. Yep. And therefore, as many people who's, who want to watch it at once can watch a seminar, which is great because that, you know, that has always been that physical restriction. So there are some parts of this yes. which in, in, in one way will work better mm. uh, than this than, than they do physically. And um, with the traders, I mean... Uh, one of the things we're going to be doing with traders, we're going to, we're offering them all sorts of opportunities so they could have their trade stand in the virtual trade hall, mm -hmm. and you click it, and it will perhaps link through to their website. That would be the simplest yeah. thing. Um, um, and we have said to all traders, if you book to stand with us this year, then you get a stand in virtually expo. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So, so, um, you know, it, it, you know, in these times, this isn't the time to try and squeeze as much money out of. Out of sure, it. yeah. Because um, you know, some of the some of the onlines have done all right because we've all bought games, but I know you know a lot of them struggling, and you know we've had lots of conversations. Yeah. So, so this is just an opportunity. But in addition to that, mm -hmm. uh, we will have what we call exhibitor events. Okay, and so. If you, one of the great things about going to Expo is talking to your favorite publisher or game designer face-to-face um, -face about their, their stuff. And so what we are going to enable traders to do is, that we're, um, is to submit um, live. So this is something they can either do in advance or at the show, during the show, 
where they can say, I'm going to be on my stand today between two and four. Hmm. And then that would link into either a Zoom room or a Twitch or a um, Discord, whatever technology sure. you want to use, but it means you can go. Now, rather than trying to scroll for a whole bunch of trade stands and find that, they will come on as exhibit of filterable events, separate from RPGs, etc. Yep. But you know, this is what's going on in the trade hall. Oh, look, there's so and so's on their stand. I'm going to go and watch that, or I can go and chat to them about that. And so it still gives you the opportunity to interact um, with the trade hall. Mm-hmm. And if you want to buy stuff, obviously, you know, traders will be given every opportunity to do whatever they can whether it links through to a web store, whether they have a sale or something or a competition, sure. they can do what they like. So what we're trying to do is make sure that that's there so that you can just go in and, you know, yeah. route the trade all as normal. Which I think is what most of us as gamers like to do. It's, it's how quickly can I give all my money away to people and fill my bags with as much toys as possible? Somebody did ask if we were going to do the bring and buy online to which the answer was several expletives. <laughs> it, it's going to be a very tricky we, one. We could try and build eBay, effectively, yeah. which is what we'd be doing yeah. um, by the end of August. But as, as yeah. I recall, that has some difficulties in confirming uh, yeah, I, and then giving money back. We would just look yeah. like a money laundering exercise. It's, yeah, it's probably best to give that one a wide berth. Uh, so, <laughs> gentlemen, and summing up then, Virtually Expo is going to start to go live from tomorrow on your website as you start to build the functionality and, and release information for people. And then if people want to know more, they can go simply to, I assume it will still be ukgamesexpo.co.uk. Yes, it will, just, yes that, that will become Virtually Expo. And all of the information that they need to find will be in there, whether they need to find out how to get tickets to join specific tournaments or competitions, whether they're looking for seminars, the exhibitors, this will slowly filter and build over the yeah, coming explain weeks. To them the basics of what they need for the technologies. So we're going to take, you know, what can be complicated manuals and, and make them, this is what you would need. Mm-hmm. Um, so try. Uh, we're also going to do some Twitch content to talk you yep. through that as well, both for traders and people attending and say, look, this is how you install it. This mm. happened don't click that that's come off in your hand um so hopefully just try and you know as we do with the real expo be as helpful as possible <laughs> helpful, so yeah. smooth out some of the bumps from uh, technology i think is is probably key i know depending on where you are in the world and, and what age you're at people have a very different skill for tech i know i normally sit here and whine until lloyd or justin fixes it for me um so i'm i'm, I'm 100 with you on that um it's been a pleasure talking to you as always. I hope Virtually Expo um, fills the gap, uh, fills that niche for a lot of people uh, at the end of the summer. Um, if there's nothing else, I think we can move on. I'm sure you've got more than enough work to be doing over the next few days and weeks to try and get ready. Yes, yeah. Well, look, thank you very much. And, you know, as uh, we always say to the whole team over there, keep yourself safe. Mm. Yeah. Keep going, and uh, we will all get through this, and you know we will get back together again and, and game. Oh yeah, it can't last forever. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye. Okay.